And this one comes from Leon Matthew, please. Leon Matthew. Immigration has uh, put public services at great risk. What are your plans to deal with this? Immigration has put public services at great risk. What are your plans to deal with this? Natalie Bennett. Well, I'm afraid, Leon, I entirely disagree with the premise of your question. What's put our public services at risk is austerity, failure to invest and privatisation, particularly of our NHS. <laughs> now, I am an immigrant. I've chosen to become a British citizen to make my life in Britain. I came as a visitor. I loved the British way of life. I loved the traditions, the culture, and I decided to say, stay and make this my home. I went into politics because I want to improve that, I want to protect it, and I want to make sure the vulnerable and our natural environment are protected. Now, I live in Summers Town in central London, a very diverse community. There are migrants there, some of them are cleaners, some of them are doctors, some of them are grandmas. They're all contributing to the British way of life, to the British life in their own way. Now, there's someone here on this platform who wants to utterly demonise those migrants, and you know who I mean. I want to celebrate the contribution of migrants to Britain, and I believe we all should be doing that. No, no. Nicholas, Nicholas Sturgeon. We need strong controls on immigration. Of, of course we do. And we need to make sure that people don't get away with abusing the system that the rest of us pay for. And yes, there are parts of the UK where housing and public services are under real strain. But I think the answer to that is to build more houses and invest in our public services, not to scapegoat immigrants. I fear that the debate at Westminster on immigration is driven far too much by Nigel Farage and UKIP. I think it's important that we do remember some key facts. EU immigrants to our country do make a net contribution to our public finances. A majority, a clear majority of migrants work and pay taxes. A majority of those who don't work are students. And of course, hundreds of thousands of people go from this country to other countries all of the time to live and settle there. How would we feel if they were spoken about the way we sometimes allow migrants here to be spoken about? So let's have the debate, let's not duck the issues, but let's make it civilised and not have it driven by the intolerance of Nigel Farage and his colleagues. Ed Miliband. Leon, I've changed Labour's approach on immigration because I think that the starting point has got to be that people's concerns are not based on prejudice. People's concerns are real, and we have to address them. That's why we've said that if people come here, they won't get benefits for at least the first two years, because I think people should contribute before they claim. And it's why we've also said that we're going to deal with something which I don't think has been properly dealt with at all under David Cameron's government, which is migrant labor being abused, exploited, to drive down people's wages. You know, when I talk to people around the country, it's one of the biggest sources of concern and anxiety for them because they say my wages are being driven downwards, you've got migrant labour being brought in, paid less than the minimum wage, and nobody's doing anything about it. It's time to act. It's time to act on the rogue employers. It's time to act on the ga gang masters. It's time to act on the rogue landlords. It's time to have fairness, because I'm going to counter exploitation wherever I find it, because we're going to protect the working people of this country. Nigel Farage. When you lose an argument in politics, you tend to resort to abusing your opponent. And we've seen quite a bit of this uh, towards UKIP recently. Uh, the fact is, Leon, you're right. A massive increase in our population means we've got to find another quarter of a million primary school places by 2020. Uh, it means we have fewer GPs per capita than any other country in Europe. We were in no position to cope with this massive rise in our population. What to do about it? Well, we have to be honest and we have to say, if you're EU members, you cannot do anything about the numbers coming to Britain. My plan would be to have a trade relationship with the EU, to be good neighbours with the EU, but not to be a member of political union, to take back control of our borders and to put in place an Australian-style point system so we can choose the quantity and type of people that come to our country. We would no longer discriminate against people from India in favour of Eastern Europe. It would be a fair, ethical policy, and it would work. Leanne Wood. 
So you abuse immigrants and those with HIV and then complain that UKIP is being abused. <clears throat> now, there is a risk to public services, but I don't believe that that comes from immigration. I believe that that has come about as a result of cuts. So the answer to that is to end austerity. There are scarce resources. There aren't enough to go around. Now, our public services, especially the NHS, would collapse if we were to end immigration tomorrow. Now, there are real issues in terms of the driving down of wages, and uh, that has to be addressed. And the way to address that is to raise the minimum wage to the living wage and to strengthen trade unions. We should be looking at repealing the trade union legislation that Margaret Thatcher brought in, because if you have stronger trade unions, then you have a stronger defence.